Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Unreal Engine 4.26 was just released. Now, there's a couple of really cool new features in here. The highlights have got to be hair is now ready for prime time, and the new water system are both enabled in this particular release. So what I'm going to do is start with a quick hands-on for both of those things, and then we're going to circle on back, come here, and then we'll go in and check out the full release notes for this particular version. So first, let us go take a look at the new features. First, we're going to quickly showcase one of the exciting new features of 4.26, and that is the new water system. Now, I'm not going to go into this a ton of depth because, in fact, I've already done this once, but let's go ahead and showcase it anyway. So I'm going to take this default scene. We're going to go ahead and add a landscape in here. We're going to create a new world. All right, we got a giant world going on. Uh, let's move that down slightly so we're not being so rude to our uh, guest here. So uh, let's see. You go down. All right, there we go. So now it's underground. We're going to go over here, make sure that we are in landscape mode, and we're just going to drop the world down a bit. So hold down shift, and let's let's add some depressions in our world. Oops, that was not a depression. That was the opposite. All right, there we go. So we got a little bit of uneven terrain around us. And now what we can do is go ahead and add in the new water system. In order to do this, you got to go here into plugins. It's predictable at this point. Search for water, enable it, and then do a restart. Of course, this is early so do keep that in mind and it's not it's probably better off to use the uwiz system that we got for free a little while back instead of this for now but once you've got it here search for water and you are going to find all kinds of different waters here so you got lakes rivers um oceans and so on oceans are large pretty much infinite water bodies uh whereas a lake is much more bounded so let's drop a lake in your scene you see this uh spline mesh controls the outer boundaries of it and there you go. Now you can actually go ahead and control, you can grab the, let's switch back into select mode. Uh, you can grab the individual spline points on the, uh, the water system. So let's make sure our water is selected here. So water, water, lake. And you can grab those points and you can sort of rearrange where your water is. You're going to notice you have uh, water, wave rippling, and so on. You have full control over all of those settings. You can create your own custom waves. You can create your own... Um, a way that it interacts with the shore. You can have it so that it works underwater or not. Uh, you can also, again, come in here. Hopefully this will work in this example. And we can drop in a river. A river, on the other hand, is just a straight spline point uh, that controls um, like a path of water. It shouldn't be passing through a lake. That's going to confuse this guy just a little bit. So let's move that guy over there. So there is a river running on our surface. I'm not sure it's going to work in this particular case. I'm actually using uh, one version out of place, but this is a piece of water you can uh, kind of place in your world. You can edit the spline points in it. So you can have your um, river snake along different directions, of course, and it is also uh, terrain aware. So if I come in here, there you see where our river is now running. So we can actually go ahead, let's just continue here. Uh, we can go back into our selected river. So let's go back to select mode, uh, our river right here. By the way, you can have multiple. And then as you grab control the spline points, your river continues to expand out to fill in the terrain. So you've got river sets, you've got the lake sets, and then of course you've got oceans for much larger bodies of water. And as these guys grow to encompass uh, new spaces. So again, if we move this guy around a bit, if there is a depression, it should automatically fill it. Uh, give it a bit of time. It'll fill in there. And this is all based off of, actually, that may not be below ground. So let's make sure that we are below ground. There we go. So once we are underground, it will just naturally fill it with water. So you can use a combination of rivers, lakes, and then oceans. Now this system is again a little early. I would give it a bit of time before I would consider using it in production, but that is one of the biggest new features of 4.26. Another cool feature in Unreal Engine 4.26 is that Hair is finally ready for prime time. Now, if you want to check out Hair, what you have to do is come up Edit, go into Plugins, and Locate Groom. There are going to be two of them. Enable them and restart, and then you are good to go. We are ready to start with this. Now, what we need is some hair. In order to get hair, one of the easiest ways would be to use Maya and something called Shave and a Haircut, which Epic Games actually purchased. But instead, what we're going to do is the cheap way. We're going to use Blender. In a default scene, we're going to get rid of the default cube. We're going to add in a spherical mesh, so mesh, and then isosphere like so. With that selected, we're going to go down here, create a new particle system for it, and then we're going to switch that to type hair. With that selected, we can set it to whatever seed we want. We probably don't want it to be this long, so let's switch that down to one meter length. 
So we got long hairs going on. Once you've got created your hair, just come on up here to the modifiers and then convert into particles. You are now done with your sphere. You can go ahead and delete that if you wish, and you have a newly created mesh of hair. Now, Alembic can't actually export this as hair, so what we need to do is go to Object, and then we'll convert to Curve from Mesh. Now we've created that, we're good to go. Now what we're gonna do is a file, an export, and we're gonna export this as Alembic. Uh, we'll pick our location, so we'll go desktop. We'll call this hair.abc. Uh, we're gonna scale this up 100 times so that it's full-sized in Unreal Engine. We only want one frame of animation, like so, and we only wanna do it to the selected object. And once we've got all that done, you can go ahead and do an export. So now we can head back over to Blender, uh, assuming you've done your restart after enabling the Groom plugin. Come here, do an import, like so, and then select your hair file. So that one, I think I called hair. And then we're gonna go uh, rotate 90 degrees on X and negative one on uh, Y scale to get it to line up properly to Unreal Engine and import it. So now we should have a new hair file. We should be able to drop that into our scene like so. And there is our new ball of hair. Some pretty exciting stuff, but what you're gonna probably wanna do is hook that hair up to something. So we're gonna go ahead and create a spherical mesh here. Uh, I think we're gonna probably wanna scale that guy to say 1.5, 1.5 and 1.5. All right, that's a little bit closer. And with that guy selected, we're gonna create a blueprint for it, like so. In the blueprint editor, select your mesh component. And then what we are going to do is add a new component to it. Search for type, oops, add component. Here, we're going to add, search from the right spot here, add groom, like so. And now you can go ahead right here and pick your groom asset. So we can pick the hair right here. So there we have hair added to our mesh. We're good to go, let's go back into our scene, and there we have mesh on our hair. Now what you might find out of the box is that's not really that exciting of hair, but what we gotta do is basically go into the hair mesh and then double click it. You'll go into the groom editor here and you're gonna notice you have a sobriety of options here. So we can go ahead and we can enable uh, simulation on it. I find this is way too strong in most cases. Let's put that to minus 98 instead. And sure, we're good to go. Now let's go back into our scene and you will see now that my phone stopped ringing, you will see our hair mesh with simulation going on. Now you're gonna to wanna to control the actual, the actual hair settings over here in the groom settings. You got all kinds of settings over here. I'm not sure why it's not previewing here. I think there should be there should be a preview over here. I'm not doing sure if I've done something wrong there. But that is the basics of getting your hair into Unreal Engine, and as you can see, simulations kicks in and you can have hair in your world. You can also do LODs on this hair so that it can uh, handle uh, lower capability machines and so on. So that is the new hair functionality in Unreal Engine 4.26. Okay, so now it's release notes time. Let's go run through some of the quick details of what is here. Now there's a ton in these release notes and to be quite honest, a lot of this stuff is actually geared more towards film production than it is for game development. So we're just gonna do some of the highlights of the new features and functionality in here, specifically focusing on the stuff that is most relevant for game developers. Now this is the summary blog from uh, Unreal Engine, but what we're instead going to do is check out the release notes. And as you can see by the uh, the, the amount of text here, there is a ton new in this particular review, so we're just gonna hit the highlights. One of the major ones we already kind of showcased, uh, hair, fur, and feathers are now ready for production. These were first added in Unreal Engine 4.24. They are here now. Now, of course, your hair authoring has to be done external like we did in Blender, uh, but once it's brought in, you now have the Groom Asset Editor. Um, another new feature in this particular thing that I didn't, I didn't actually showcase and I was going to is the new Sky Cloud and Environment Lighting. Uh, so we've got to bring dynamic time of day lighting for large worlds from atmosphere, sky, and cloud systems. Also add a unified window to create and edit these environments and lighting components in a single scene. One of the cool new features is the volumetric cloud rendering. A new cloud rendering system for large scale cloudscapes and atmospheric fog offer full dynamic material driven workflow for um, cloud creation, scalable quality across console and desktop platforms, support for cinematic quality for film and television production. That's pretty sweet actually. It fully integrates uh, with existing environment lighting, uh, Sky atmosphere, skylight, two directional lights. Um, get started by dragging a volumetric crowd component into your scene. Uh, next, we've also got uh, 
sky atmosphere component improvements. I'm uh, not going to go into a full detail there. Real time, um, real time skylight capture. A lot of this again would be most useful for film. So if you're trying to get that perfect sky thing going, there's also the new environment light mixer that uh, brings all your environment lighting components for sky cloud directional lights into a single window. Uh, water rendering and meshing system, which again is experimental. You can see much prettier versions of what we showcased earlier on, but this is the new system. And as you can see the waves in action, you've got a lot of fine tuned detail control over how the watering works. Uh, there's also new additions to water rendering and shading features. It comes with a number of shaders, by the way, to get you up and going. Uh, water body actors and editing. I showcased this in my other video, but when you put things in, they will actually interact with the water. So if you've got objects in the water, they will create the, the proper amount of wake. Uh, you got the ability to find spline based rivers. We looked at that really briefly. Um, movie render queue workflows and enhancements. Again, this stuff is more about um, film production. You know, it's being used more and more often for Unreal Engine for things. Obviously, Mandalorian is the uh, high profile example. Uh, render path support there. Pro Media Codex supported there. Again, mostly uh, stuff for uh, film stuff. Uh, we got a sequencer nonlinear animation tool in beta format. Enables you to quickly create, modify, join, and blend animation assets in order to create new animations and cinematics. So you can do more of the work directly inside of uh, Unreal Engine and not necessarily after Max Maya Blender or whatever. Uh, by the way, they also just released uh, Power IK as one of their new features. So if you want to have... Um, advanced kinematic support directly inside of Unreal Engine. Do check that out as well. I'm hopefully going to do a follow-up video in the future. Uh, and display improvements, multi-GPU with NVIDIA NLink. Hey, that's still a thing. I kind of thought they got away from multi-GPU stuff, but it's cool to see it still being updated. Um, and display stuff, again, that's, that's not generally that relevant for game development. Collaborative viewer template improvements. Again, um, it's being used more and more often in other industries, so you're seeing these updates there as well. Uh, Chaos Physics uh, is a lightweight physics simulation solution that's used currently in um, Fortnite. I did a video on uh, this in action as well, so it allows you to do, it's their new physics system basically, but it also allows for destructive physics. Uh, physics is on by default with Unreal Engine 4.26, but will be deprecated in the future, and the Chaos Solver will become the default. Uh, so there is that new phys physics system in beta support. Again, I've done a video on that as well. So if you want to learn a little bit more, I'll link to my water beta, my water video and my chaos video if you want to learn more. Uh, the mesh creation tool. So there's basically lightweight modeling stuff that was built into uh, Unreal Engine a couple of versions back. Uh, there have been in some improvements in that regard to the, the user interface and the way that those tools work. Improved mirroring tools, uh, improved Boolean tools, improved mesh editing tools. It's kind of funny with you getting uh, animation tools sculpting tools as we are seeing right here and also ik tools all kind of built in so you're kind of getting to the point where more and more of stuff that you would normally have done in your dcc tool are being brought into unreal engine so eventually unreal engine may be one program to rule them all some data smith stuff uh usd import uh, usd is the universal scene description from pixar again more moved used on the movie side but it is becoming a more and more common interchange format in general um yeah, so the rest of this stuff, for the most part, is pretty heavily for film production, uh, but definitely kind of improvements across the board uh, with Unreal Engine, and, and this just kind of keeps going and going and going. Control rig improvements, full body IK node. Uh, this, again, is sort of like the, the power IK type functionality, but you're going to be able to do more and more of your animations directly inside of uh, Unreal Engine instead of having to do them externally. Unreal Engine's light baking system, Light Mass, now offers a next generation GPU based variant built from the ground up. GPU Light Mass improves on the GPU Light Mass system by leveraging DirectX and DXR ray tracing to um, really speed things up in that particular case. Uh, it is a plugin that needs to be enabled. Uh, debugging and profiling improvements, mobile rendering improvements. Uh, pixel projected reflections for mobile and experimental version, ray tracing updates and improvements, improved baking tools in experimental form, which is actually kind of cool. So you can conveniently bake maps for normals, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and texture straight from your project content browser. Again, something you would have normally done in your DCC tool is being brought into Unreal Engine. Uh, improved UV editing. Again, one of those things you would normally do external. So in some ways they're kind of turning it into a model. Uh, Gen 5 temporal upsampling. You can see it in action right there. It's pretty subtle, but it does have an effect. Uh, t uh, temporal anti-aliasing normally causes pixel crawl for me. So it, it'd be nice to see if Gen 5 kind of improves some of that. Um, so that's kind of 
where we're at. There's, it just kind of keeps going. Mobile deferred renderer. You can see it. Mobile deferred. Mobile forward. So you do actually get much nicer shadow effects from that and lighting effects out of it. Anastrophe, so if you're doing like a clear coat paints and such, kind of simulating that, that is now uh, considered ready for prime time. Um, LiDAR point cloud integration, open XR integration for VR, AR headsets and so on. And yeah, we, we just gotta keep going and going. Some improvements to Niagara. Uh, a bunch of upgrades, a bunch of fixes, and we'll call that the end. So if you really want to get into like a much more detail of this guy, it is available. But you can see from the highlights on the side, the big new things are the hair, which we saw really briefly how to get started with, including the new groom asset. We've got the uh, sky and cloud environmental vaps, um, uh, lighting, uh, some of that for cinematic real-time world and for creating you know dynamic volumetric clouds and the unified lighting control system. The new experimental water rendering system, and then... Uh, uh, some improvements on the film production side of things that probably aren't that relevant to most game developers. And in the end, that is Unreal Engine 4.26. Pretty nice release on the whole. Uh, a lot of it is a little bit early on. Uh, hair is ready for production, though. That's definitely nice to see. So you can do hair, fur, feathers, and that kind of stuff using this new plugin. The water stuff is still a little ways away, but it is pretty nice. And it's kind of cool to see them integrating more and more of this stuff like modeling, sculpting, UV editing, uh, texture baking, all into Unreal Engine. Again, things that you would normally need a third-party tool to use. I do wonder if they're ultimately aiming to be like an all in one solution. And I don't know what I think of that personally, but let me know what you think of this release and of that future in the comments down below. And that is Unreal Engine 4.26 available for download right now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.